So I love tablets, I love video editing. Can I video edit on a tablet? Well, of course you can, but does it actually work well? Well, I have the Microsoft Surface Pro 6 here and we're gonna see how it actually performs. All right, what is up everyone? So yes, I have the Microsoft Surface Pro 6, the i7 version in front of me. It is a full-blown Windows 10 tablet, Windows 10, maybe laptop replacement for some people. However, for me, it cannot be a laptop replacement or a desktop replacement if it can't edit video flawlessly. So I wanna take a look at video editing on the Surface Pro 6. We're gonna start off actually talking about Windows 10, then I'm gonna talk about applications, programs, etc., And then we're gonna talk about the actual user experience of the physical tablet. All right, so Windows 10. Well, actually, Microsoft has been trying to make an operating system for both the desktop and a tablet since Windows 8. And the reality is it works okay. Windows 10 works okay on a tablet, but it's not as clean, it's not as flawless as something like iOS or even Android. And really just what it comes down to is all the buttons and everything you have to click on your screen, some things in Windows are just too small. Luckily though, you can get a stylus. You can buy an extra stylus for the Surface Pro and other Windows tablets for that matter. And that lets you fine tunely click on different buttons and definitely gives you a better experience. And if you're gonna be video editing, probably video editing on just the touchscreen is going to be a rather daunting task. So at the very least, you're gonna need a stylus to navigate through and edit. However, the stylus still isn't even the greatest option because Windows 10 is really made for a keyboard and mouse. So you're probably gonna wanna connect a keyboard and mouse to do your video editing. Now I will say, just side note, if you just wanna edit with you know just your fingers on a touchscreen, the Surface Windows 10 experience probably is not gonna be the right way for you. You're probably gonna wanna consider an iPad with a program like LumaFusion. But anyway, I digress. Let's talk about video editors. The first video editor I tried out was Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve. You can get this for free or there is a paid version. And DaVinci Resolve opening up, it seemed like it was going to perform very well. I imported a ton of clips, some 4K, some 1080p, and just skimming through them, previewing them, etc., was flawless. There was no lag, everything was buttery smooth. Even adding clips into the timeline, stacking them up, it seemed like it was doing okay. When I changed around some colors, adjusted some white balance, there were some times that it got a little slow, a little laggy, but overall a still decent experience. However, I did have a couple times where DaVinci Resolve crashed. Sometimes it was when I was just adjusting colors in the color wheel. Other times it was when I was adding text layers. It just kind of crashed out of the blue. Now I will say I was editing very rapidly, adjusting things really quickly and whatnot, but that kind of shows that maybe it doesn't keep up as much as I would like it to. Anyway, moving on to our next program, HitFilm Express 12. I installed it, imported footage, was browsing through the footage and whatnot, and all in all, it was performing quite well. Even adding some text layers and whatnot, all in all, it was performing fine. There were times that it had its own hiccups. There were times that it was getting a little bit laggy due to massive amounts of color correction, effects, et cetera, et cetera. But it was a usable experience, especially if you're gonna be doing a relatively short edit. And the same story goes when it comes to Vegas Pro 16. I was throwing clips in, previewing them, stacking them all up, adding color correction, and it was a relatively smooth and seamless process. Just over time when you have multiple clips playing at once, there are times it's gonna get a little bit laggy here and there. I mean, we're talking about a tablet. We're not talking about a full-blown desktop. So you should honestly expect that. But all in all, it was fine. My only issue I had with all the programs I used was DaVinci Resolve 
just uh, kept crashing. But HitFilm and Vegas performed fine, no crashing whatsoever. Now, unfortunately, I did not mess around with Adobe Premiere Pro. I don't actually have a current license of it, but doing some research and just going off of what I've tested out thus far, it's gonna probably perform okay. 1080p is gonna be fine, 4K should even be fine, just you gotta be cautious of how many layers, how many effects, and whatnot that you add to your timeline. However, moving away from software, does the Surface Pro offer a good experience? Well, taking a look at the screen, the screen at around 12 inches isn't anything massive, but luckily there is a display output on the surface, so you can plug this into a larger monitor and get some more screen real estate when working. But if you did have to rely on the actual screen on the surface, it's a gorgeous display. High resolution, great colors, I don't have anything to really complain about it. What I will complain about though is actually the I.O. on the Surface Pro. There is only one USB port and it's USB type A, not USB C. And this is a huge problem. When I did a video on the Surface Pro about gaming, my final thought was I just wish it had Thunderbolt 3 so I can plug in an eGPU. And that's kind of the same here. Although an eGPU might not always help in terms of video editing, because sometimes video editing is more CPU dependent than GPU dependent, having a faster USB Type-C port would allow me to plug in more storage. Because you have to realize when you're video editing, you're probably not relying on just the storage on the tablet. This tablet only has 256 gigabytes of onboard storage. And yes, I can plug in a micro SD card into this tablet, and that would definitely help out, but you're talking about sometimes a terabyte plus of footage for just one project. And I can't plug in any real hard drives to this tablet because all my hard drives are USB type C and not USB type A. Also, another thing that wasn't mentioned to this point is rendering times. You probably expected this, but whenever you're rendering out or transcoding any video clip, on the Surface Pro 6, it's definitely gonna take a lot longer than a lot of other computers. When I was messing around, actually in the benchmarking video, I had DaVinci Resolve pulled up and I exported about a five minute clip in just standard HD, and it took the Surface almost eight minutes to complete that render. So there are gonna be times that you're really gonna be waiting a while to render out footage on the Surface Pro but I think everyone would expect that. But anyway, that is video editing on the Microsoft Surface Pro 6. It is very capable, you can actually do a lot. It doesn't really have the power to replace something like a desktop, but you can definitely use it in a pinch. However, I would not recommend buying it if you do plan on video editing on this tablet. And I think that really, for me, comes down to the lack of ports, the lack of USB Type-C, the lack of Thunderbolt. There are other tablets with Thunderbolt 3 and USB Type-C that could be very beneficial in a video editing space, whether that is plugging in hard drives to your Surface to edit off of, or maybe even a 10 gigabit ethernet switch to connect to a local server. Not gonna really going to be able to do it on this tablet, but there are other tablets that you can do that on. So guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you have any questions, comments, concerns? Let me know. Anyway, I'm Eric, and let me get back to video editing on the Surface Pro. I mean, my MacBook.